welcome to Club 56. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. This is it. Christmas week is coming up so soon. Nothing added, no freely icing, no flashy glitter, just simply Christmas. And maybe some silly sweaters. Yeah, maybe that's you. Okay, to get us started today, I have a fun game called Say What? It's, here's how you play. I'll display some random words. You will read the words out loud where you're at. They make no sense, right? Right. But they sound like something that does make sense. So we're going to practice with this one. And then you're going to see if you can guess the Christmas phrases by reading these completely nonsensical words. Let's practice. Here we go. Read it out loud. <laughs> Ready? Twin cool, twin cool, lid dills tar. It kind of sounds like something. If you say it a little bit faster and sort of mumble, maybe it sounds like something we know, like twin cool, twin cool, lid dills tar. Oh, did you figure it out? It's twinkle, twinkle, little star. Yeah, okay. Does that make sense? Got it? Now, the, all of these other phrases coming up, they're all having to do with Christmas because this is Christmas. Say what? All right. Are you ready? Here we go. Whole lean height. Whole lean height. Whole lean height. Oh, did you get it? Type it in. Type it in if you know it. I'll give you a second. Whole lean height. Whole lean height. Sounds like holy night. Did you get it? Holy night. Okay, let's try another one. I like this one. Hug lease wetters. Something to do with Christmas. Type it in if you know it. Hug lease wetters. Okay, mumble the words together and see if that helps. Hug lease sweaters. Oh, <laughs> I think I gave it away. It's ugly sweaters. Did you get it? Ugly sweaters. Awesome. Okay, here we go. Oh, this one's tricky. Here we go. You can do it. One or soap hands lay. One or soap hands lay. Hmm. What do you do with Christmas? Type it in if you know it. One or soap hands lay. One or soap and hands lay. One or soap hands lay. Did you get it? One horse open sleigh. One horse open sleigh. Yeah. Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. All right, here we go. Oak hum hall leaf eighth full. <laughs> these random words put together. Oak, hum, hall, leaf, eighth, full. Hmm. If you kind of string them together, it sounds like something else that has to do with Christmas. Do you have it figured out? Did you type it in? I'll say it fast for you. Oak, hum, hall, leaf, eighth, full. <laughs> Oak, hum, hall, leaf, eighth, full. Are you ready? Here it is. Oh, come all ye faithful. Did you get it? I like that one. That one's silly. Actually, I think the next one might be my favorite. <laughs> all of these are silly. I like these silly fun word games, word play. That's me. Okay, here we go. Pep, hermit, canned, he. Something to do with Christmas. Pep, hermit, canned, he. So when you string it together and say it more fast, then it kind of sounds like something else. Ready to hear fast? Pep hermit can he. Pep hermit can he. <laughs> Do you get it? Did you type it in? Here it comes. Peppermint candy. Peppermint candy. Like a candy cane. Peppermint candy. Okay. Our very last one. Here comes our very last one. Mayor. Reek, wrist, must. Hmm. Mare, 
freak wrist must. Okay, if you say it out loud to yourself, a little bit fast. <laughs> say it quicker. Type it in if you know what it is. I'll say it fast. Are you ready? Mary wrist must. Mary wrist must. <laughs> and type it in. What are those crazy words that are sound sort of like that? <laughs> Mary wrist must. It is Merry Christmas. That's right. Merry Christmas, my friends. Thanks for playing my game with me. But now let's continue our time together with giving our praises to God in worship. Will you stand and sing with me? Here we go. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let her receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature. Glory to the King. I'm thrilled to be with you once again, swapping stories and sharing truth from the Bible. I tell you, I am 38 and I'm still learning amazing things from God's word. As many of you are very much aware, next week is Christmas. Our minds are a little bit on gifts, getting them and hopefully giving them. In fact, the best kinds of gifts are the ones you really think about before you get them for someone. Not just the, hey, I'll throw in a gift card kind of gift. Gift cards are nice, but a thoughtful, specific, oh my goodness, how did you know kind of gift, right? Those are way better. Has anyone ever done a white elephant gift exchange? You know what a white elephant gift exchange is? It's basically um, rooting through your junk in your house, and in a funny way, 
getting rid of the things that you don't want. <laughs> a singing wallfish, check. An autographed close-up picture of your aunt, perfect. <laughs> One time, we did a toilet seat. Yes, we put $20 on the inside of the toilet seat, but it was a full-on toilet seat that we wrapped and gave away because who needs an extra toilet seat in their house? It wasn't me, it wasn't used. It wasn't used. <laughs> okay, let me ask it this way. Has anyone ever gotten something as a gift that they really, really wanted? Okay, you know what's coming, right? How about the other way around? Have you ever given someone something that they really, really wanted? Whew. Or how about this? Has anyone here given someone a gift, but you weren't really sure if they liked it? How did their response make you feel? It's hard to get something you're not really thrilled about. As much as it is difficult to see someone not like a gift you thought they'd love. If you haven't figured it out yet, today really is about giving. It's the perfect time of year to talk about it. God gave us Jesus, the greatest gift in the history of everything. And a lot of people were pretty excited that the Savior had finally come. The biggest question is this. Even if you received everything you wanted for Christmas, how can you still focus on the best gift, Jesus? Pretty good question. And the answer can be found in Luke chapter 2. And let's watch today's episode of The So-and-So Show. <laughs> Brandon, grab some swim trunks and meet me outside for some fun in the sun. Oh boy. Hey, Brandon. Come on over here. I just threw some hot dogs on the grill. John, what are you doing? Well, we've been cooped up inside for so long, I thought we might as well come out here and take advantage of the beautiful weather. It's like 12 degrees. Temperature is a construct. Okay, seriously, John, what is your plan here? Yeah, you've not... heard of Christmas in July, right? Well, I wanted to do J July and Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that makes no sense. Buy yourself some lemonade. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's frozen. Uh, yeah, it's summer. It's frozen lemonade. You're the one who's going to be frozen if you don't get out of here. Come on. All right, let, let me get you a coat at least, okay? Here you go, buddy. I feel great. Yeah. You're strong, Brandon. You work out. I warned you. John. And welcome to The So-and-So Show. Hey, Christmas Day is just a few days away, and we wanted to wish you a very Merry Christmas from all of us here at the show. Hey, John, what's one of your favorite Christmas traditions? Uh, the lighting of the Yule Log. Really? Mm -hmm. That didn't turn out so well for you last year. <sighs> what are you doing, oh. John? Hey, Brandon. Uh, hey. Longbeard Carl cut this limb down, and I thought I'd use it for the annual Yule Log. Yeah. <laughs> So you don't have a fireplace. <laughs> fireplace. Oh, hey. Hey, Brandon, hold on what? a second. Uh, hey! Brandon, there's a squirrel back here! What does your whole family hate you, little squirrel family? How you doing there in the tree? Hey, hey, you. No, no. No, stay back. No. Oh, no! Oh! No! No, no! It burns! Ah, get it off! Get it off! It's on my eyes! Ah! Ah! Oh, no! 
<laughs> yeah, I forgot all about that. <clears throat> Squirrel, where? One of my favorite Christmas traditions is the Christmas card, but we decided this year we were gonna do living Christmas cards, so let's see what we got. Okay, yeah. Oh, here's one from Longbeard Carl. Oh, Longbeard Carl. Oh, this should be interesting. And it should be fun. Festive. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what else we got. Uh, okay. Oh, here's one. Oh, here's one from the so-and-so show player. Oh. Hey. <laughs> oh. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Thy leaves are so unchanging. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Thy leaves are so unchanging. Not only green when summer's here. But also when it's cold and drear. Oh, Christmas tree! Thy leaves are so unchanging. So moving. Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, you know, uh, another one of my favorite things to do at Christmas is to reach out to the people I love and tell them I am thankful for them. All right, let's call some people. Okay, here you go. Me, you want yeah, me to do it? Pull up my contact list. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Got it. And just scroll through it. Oh, I see what we're doing. Okay. Hey, I'm having trouble putting this on my face. You got it. Scrolling. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. Scrolling. Yeah. Okay. Scrolling. And stop. Great. You are now calling a random person. Okay. Oh no. What? Hello. It's Sugar Tilt a Whirl. The cotton candy lady. Yes. Yikes. Hello, Sugar. Wow. Well, if it isn't Brandon and the one with the hat. It's John. I know. <laughs> uh, are you still in the cotton candy business, Sugar? You ever been to a carnival in December? I haven't. Eat a lot of cotton candy around the Yule log, do ya? No, but I, I thought- Business maybe... is slow is what I'm saying. We're so sorry. What are you sorry for? It's not your business. Your business is sitting there and talking. You can do that year round. Oh, okay. Well, I just wanted to I've say launched a new business for Christmas. Uh, what is your business? Everyone loves singing telegrams, right? Sure they do. <laughs> no, they don't, John. Everyone hates singing telegrams. They're obnoxious and invasive. Okay. So I came up with a new kind of telegram just in time for the holidays. Want to buy one? Uh, sure, I'll take one. That'll be twelve ninety nine. I accept Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, Ethereum. Oh, okay. Um, uh, all right, there. Thanks. Come in. Thank you for your purchase of Sugar Tilt to World Screaming Yellowgram. Why sing when you can yell? Dear Brandon and the other one. I hope your Christmas is filled with good tidings and silent nights. Stop. I hope you get everything you wished for, unless you wished for cotton candy, because I'm not doing that right now. We talked about this. Stop. Happy Christmas to you both. You are the only friends I have. Stop. God bless us, everyone. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. Huh? Uh, but here's something we should all expect. Huh? It's Bible story time with Kellen! Stop. What is up, good people? Just getting our Christmas cheer on. I like it. Hey, Kellen, what's one of your favorite Christmas traditions? Oh, I am a huge fan of giving gifts. Oh, I love getting gifts. I think he said giving. Right. Oh, don't get me wrong. I love getting a good gift, but there's really something special about finding that unexpected surprise to give someone you love. It's really cool. I also love telling today's Bible story every year. So let's take a look at the book of Luke and the unexpected surprise that God gave to the world. Lights? It happened like this. Caesar Augustus made a law, a decree, a census would be taken. 
which meant everyone in the Roman world would be counted. Hear ye, hear ye. I, Caesar, declare. No, I decree. Everyone in the Roman world is to be counted. You must return to your hometown to be listed, and so it has been said, and so it will be so. Joseph was engaged to Mary, who was pregnant and about to give birth. When he heard the emperor's decree, he knew he had to travel to his hometown. And so, Joseph and Mary began their journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem, the town of David. The journey probably took them several days. So think about that next time you want to complain about driving a few hours to visit your grandparents. When Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem, there was no place for them to stay. Hey, we need a place to stay for the night. Sorry, guest rooms are all full. Please, Mary is about to have a baby. Isn't there anything you can do? Not unless you want to sleep over there. We'll take it. So Mary and Joseph stayed near the animals, in a cave or a stable of some kind. While they were there, Mary gave birth to a baby boy. There was no bed, so Mary wrapped the baby in large strips of cloth and placed him in the manger. The manger was a feeding trough for animals. The baby, of course, would be called Jesus, and he was the Son of God, and he would one day become the Savior of the world, a very humble and unexpected gift on that first Christmas, the best present any of us could ever ask for. And that is the Christmas story. Wow. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> right? I love this story. There's so much going on at Christmas. Getting gifts and going to parties, seeing family and friends, Christmas movies, all the really good things. But the Christmas story reminds us that God loves us so much that he sent his son for us. And that's what Christmas is all about. Merry Christmas, Kellen. Merry Christmas, fellas. See you later. Later. I love that Christmas all started with a gift, God's gift of his son to the world. Hey, maybe that's why we give gifts for Christmas, to remind everyone of that very first gift. I think you're right, John. Ah. So, reveal the question. What are you giving this Christmas? Yeah, we love to talk about what we're getting for Christmas, but what are you giving? You can give someone your time. You can give someone something unexpected. Mm-hmm. Herb-crusted goat cheese. Uh -huh. Were you expecting it? No, I was not. Mmm. Huh. Mm-hmm. You can give someone your love with your actions, your words, and that can point people to God who loved them so much he sent us his son. Yeah. Talk about it with each other. And we'll see you next time on the So and So Show. Merry Christmas! You want a bite? I don't. <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way! Oh, what fun <laughs> no. it is to ride oh, a one no, no, no. open sleigh! Stop. Jingle bells, jingle bells, oh, jingle oh. all the way! <laughs> Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Stop! John, stop before you break the set. <laughs>
God sent Jesus for you, and you, and you, and you, and you way in the back thinking that you're not paying attention. You too. Yeah. That's how big God's love is for us, that he sent Jesus before you were even born. He said he'd do it, and he did. I'd say that's pretty trustworthy. That means everything else God says in his word can be trusted. All of the promises of life to the fullest. God being with you always, of working for good in all things, of going to heaven, all of it, you can trust in all of it. This Christmas, as you celebrate, take a moment to realize just how much God loves you. Take your focus off of your plans and place it squarely on him for a bit. It might just change the way you think about this season. Now, it can be pretty difficult in the moment when things change to give up what we thought and trust God's plan. Before we go, let's think about this question. What are you giving this Christmas? Or maybe more to the point, what are you going to give up this Christmas? What are you giving up? Mary gave up an ordinary predictable life and gave everything of herself to have Jesus as her son. Maybe God is asking us to give something big this year. It's not an easy thing to grapple with, and it's not a simple answer. The good thing is that your friends and your leaders and your parents are ready to talk about the hard things, and you'll find amazing ways to make God's plan your plan. So before we head to small group, or before you, we head to chat time. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus. Help us to realize how big your love is. Help us to know that we can trust you no matter what, because you sent, you said you were going to send a savior and you did. You are trustworthy. Help us to focus on you and your plans for our lives this Christmas season. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Okay. Here comes this month's memory verse. <laughs> Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. All right, friends, I'm so glad you watched with me today. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas, remembering to celebrate Jesus, God's greatest gift. Merry Christmas from Club 56 and Miss Emily. See you in January.